Hey guys, so I'm doing something just a little bit different in this video. This time I'm going to be helping out some of my uh, fellow language teachers who happen to be subscribing to me. I know there's a few of you out there, so this is for you guys. Um, I'm going to show you how you can play Battleship in your language classroom. Before I tell you how to do it, I am going to say this is not my original idea. I got this from somebody else, but I thought I'd just share it with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, what the students get. Cause I'm gonna, you, you give them a handout, and then you have the same handout, and uh, and you can play the game. So the handout that I'm going to be showing on the screen is available to you in the description of the video via the link. And if you want to take it, uh, download it, whatever, uh, or just kind of copy it and change things um, to make it suit your own needs, you can do that for sure. So anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look at that document. All right, so what we're looking at here is what you would hang out to the students and also what you would use. Now we can play this game in two ways. You can either play out the students, play it together in pairs, or you can do it as a whole class. I've done it both ways and typically I find that it works better as a whole class because when you have two individuals trying to play this game together, if either of them or both of them don't really feel like playing, then it's not gonna happen. So the best bet, in my opinion, is to do it as a class. So I'm going to explain how that works. Uh, with this handout, what you're going to have here on the top are my so-called ships for battleships. So uh, my, this, in this particular chapter, they learn the words uh, pajaro for bird, pez for fish, uh, and we talk about the Aztec calendar, the calendario azteca, and then also we learn the word periodico for a newspaper. And I give those three, four, two, and two spaces. So what I do is that as a teacher is I'm going to fill in my battleship grid here with my four ships and I can put them wherever I want and of course I'm not going to show the students where I put those and the students as a class are going to try and sync my ships. I'm not going to try and sync their ships, they're just going to try and sync mine and for motivation um, whenever, whenever somebody hits one of my so-called ships I give them a point, a participation point and then if they get a sync they get two participation points. So for example let's say I put um, my ship uh, my, my newspaper ship right here so it, and it went this way so it would be one two three spaces and if a student wanted to take a shot say right here they would say voy a mandar una carta this particular grammar concept we're using here is talking about what people are going to do with uh, ir, ir a plus infinitive uh, if it was French for example it would be like je vais, je vais and then whatever it is you're going to do and so they'd say that and then I'd either say error for missed or explosion for a hit and then uh, I would randomly select the next student and then they would take a shot probably either here or here and then I tell them either if they shot here obviously that'd be a miss an error so then the next student which should also be a random would take a shot here and then here and then they'd have destroyed that ship and once they find all of the ships uh, I usually play twice so um, they figure out some sort of a marking method so that they can play two rounds on one sheet of paper. And this works really well, um, in my opinion, for, for learning and or reviewing grammar concepts. For example, if I wanted to, instead of, say, um, use this grammar concept, maybe they're learning how to conjugate AR verbs in the present tense. Uh, on the top up here, I could put uh, my different subject pronouns, like yo, tu, el a usted, nosotros, nosotras, ellos, ellas, ustedes. And then over here, I could pick, like, say, um, six or seven, however many rows I have, of different AR verbs, like hablar, trabajar, pintar, etc. And then they could just say, like, yo, pinto, and then I, they, they could take a shot right there. And that is kind of it. If you want to, this is kind of what the, you know, it looks like that as a whole. And uh, they play a couple times for the most part. The, the kids enjoy doing it especially the, the freshmen, the younger students in Spanish 1, they might get a little bit tired of it when they get to the more advanced classes, but it's still a good way for a quick review or a quick practice of a new concept, uh, conjugating verbs in particular is what I like to do with it. If you have any questions about this game, or uh, if I didn't make anything clear, please let me know, and I'll get back to you. Uh, that is it, so uh, we'll see you next time.